In this video, we will talk about what the Gini index is. So recall that in the last video, what we ended by saying was that we want a way to measure how equal or unequal a Lorenz distribution is. So we want a way to measure that. And one of the things that we were looking at when we graphed our Lorenz curve was we sort of compared our Lorenz curve. And by the way, let me label this. So our Lorenz curve was f of x equals 1 20th x plus 19 over 20 x to the 9 in this example. We want a way to measure how sort of equal or unequal of a distribution that represents. And we know that y equals x would be perfectly equal. That's the curve of perfect equity. So here's what we're going to do. So let's scroll it back down. OK, so what we can notice is that the bigger the area between those two curves above, so between y equals f of x and y equals f of x, this is the Lorenz curve. This is our Lorenz curve. And y equals x, which is the curve of perfect equity, the more unequal, whoops, sorry, that just got shifted. Okay, so there we go. So the more unequal the distribution. So what we need is to measure the area. So we're going to use area, and that's going to be the key idea. Okay, so we're ready to define this thing called the Gini index. So the Gini index for a Lorenz curve, y equals f of x, is, so I'm going to call the Gini index g, and g equals 2 times the integral from 0 to 1, x minus f of x dx. So in other words, we're finding the area between the curve of perfect equ equity, that's x, and our Lorenz curve, f of x, over the interval, because it's defined on the interval from 0 to 1. And then we're multiplying it by 2 for some reason, which I'm about to explain. OK, so why do we multiply this thing by 2? We get the whole thing about area, but why by 2? So I want to make a note of something. If we were to look at the integral without that 2 in front, the largest that integral could get is, and at this point I want you to pause the video. Pause the video for one minute and see if you can conceptually reason out what the biggest value this integral could have based off of what f of x could be. So four, three, two, one, pause the video. Pause it for one minute and see if you can determine what this biggest value for the area between the two curves could be. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it for about a minute to think about that. But the biggest that the area could be is 1 half. Because the smallest f of x could be is, what if it was just sort of, what if f of x, scrolling up to my picture, what if instead of sort of curving upwards at all, what if it was just sort of flat on the x-axis the whole way? And then maybe it has just like a massive jump and it's back up to 1 right when x equals 1. So what if, it, what if we push this curve even lower, our Lorenz curve, as far low as it can go, down to the x-axis? And in that case, sorry, I'm just going to scroll it back. We would be measuring the entire area under y equals x on the interval from 0 to 1, which is just the area of that triangle with, uh, with a base of 1 and the height is 1, and the area of that triangle would be a half. So we are going to multiply this integral by 2. We multiply the integral by 2 so that g, our guinea index, will be 
between 0 and 1. Okay, so I'm going to underline that. So that G will be between 0 and 1. Alrighty, so now that we have the Guinea index defined, I want to make a table that will summarize what the Guinea index is for a perfectly equal distribution and a perfectly unequal distribution. Okay, so I'm going to make this table here that will keep track of the type of distribution. So I'm going to look at two types. Perfectly equal and the most unequal, or maybe I could say perfectly unequal. Okay, so in a perfectly equal situation, we know what that curve is. It's f of x equals x. And in that case, we'd just be finding the area between x and itself. So the same curve. And it, there would be no area, so the Gini index would be zero. And in this situation, we've looked at what this meant in a previous video. But this means that everyone has an equal amount of whatever the resource is. In the most unequal situation, we would expect that the Guinea index would be one, would be one, and what would our function be? So our function would have to be in a situation that would make that area as big as possible. And for that to be the case, I need my function to be 0 if x is not equal to 1. So it's got to be sort of, if I draw a rough sketch and draw some axes, and here's 1, and here's 1, it's got to be perfectly along the x-axis for pretty much the whole way until I get to x equals 1, and at x equals 1, one of the properties of a Lorenz curve is, whoops, when x equals 1, the output also needs to be 1. When x equals 1, f of x needs to be 1. But in that situation, over this interval, the area between that curve, that Lorenz curve, and the curve of perfect equity, equity y equals x, would be the area of this triangle. And the area of that triangle is 1 half. So the Gini index would multiply that by 2 to get 1. But what would that mean logically if, if my picture was like this? So we were at sort of 0 the whole way until we got to this last point when we jumped up to 1. And that means that one person has everything and the others have nothing. All right, okay, so it's also true that the lower G is, the lower the Guinea index is, the more equal the distribution is, because it's closer to the curve of perfect equity. And on the flip side, the higher G is, the more unequal the more unequal our distribution is. Alrighty, so I want to end this video with some facts about the Guinea index. And then we'll focus the next video on doing some examples. Okay, so here are some facts. So with uh, income of countries in 2008, I'm going to make just a table here of what the Guinea index was for income in these countries. And the countries that I'm going to list are U the United States, Brazil, and Denmark. And for the U.S., the Guinea index for income in 2008 was 0.45. For Brazil, it was 0.567. So that would mean Brazil had a more unequal distribution of income. And Denmark was had a more equal distribution. Its Guinea index was 0.24. It was lower than the US. This is actually one of the better ones in the world in 2008. Okay, so the last remark I want to end with is that it's tempting to say, okay, we want things to be equal ideally, maybe, 
and that would correspond to a low Gini index if things were more equally distributed. But a low Gini index doesn't always mean that we're talking about a good society. So for example, so EG for example, middle class people, maybe by income, middle class people in a quote unquote poor country maybe worse off than lower income people in a quote unquote rich country. So if the quote unquote poor country perhaps had a, had a lower Gini index, because maybe just income was uh, more equally distributed, then the quote unquote rich country, and that happens sometimes with, with a country like US, which overall or collectively may have a higher net worth than a majority of other countries, yet it still has a lot of income inequality. So maybe the rich country would have a higher Gini index, signaling more inequality. But at the same time, it might be the case that a middle class person in the poor country might have a lower quality of life than a lower income individual in the rich country. So it's important to keep in mind that the Gini index is just a way to measure how equally or unequally a resource is distributed. It doesn't necessarily indicate whether a certain society is better or worse than another. So in the next video, we are going to do some examples where we compute the Guinea index.